Well, she is one of the most successful authors this country has ever, ever had. Di Morrissey has been captivating readers since she published her first novel. This year, she is celebrating a milestone. Now, look at those books going through, people. This is amazing. There's book after book after book. We are talking this milestone of 20 books in 20 years. She's got a new one. It is going to be a bestseller. The Opal Desert, she joins us. Good morning, Di. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, Kerry ann Pretty amazing, isn't it? It Since... is. Has anybody actually achieved 20 successful best-selling books in 20 years? I'm... Mm, I don't think so. Not that, not that I'm aware of in and this country anyway. And everyone better and better selling, which, you know, that's our benchmark, success is sales. But everyone better selling than the one before. Yes, it's nice to have a graph that goes north. I think what happens is that as each book comes out, more people discover me and then they go and read the, all the previous ones. So it's sort of, it's, it's been wonderful to keep that kind of base going. So, mm. yeah, and they're very loyal readers and mothers now pass them on to their daughters and get their daughters to read them as well as, as their men folk. Indeed. And, uh, well, clearly it's a predominantly female readership. And purchases. Women buy the books and mm. then hand them on to mm. to um, male friends and husbands. But I think as importantly as that, um, the issues in amongst these themes in every book, there are some really gutsy, gritty issues. Mm. Now, earlier on, if instead of having Di Morrissey at the top, it was D Morrissey, and they thought maybe you were a guy, what would the graph, or what would it have been like? I think... I think I, hopefully it would have been just as successful, but the issue is to to get people to uh, to read them because mm. for some reason and take them seriously and not just mm. dismiss them as romance novels, which they're not. And that was a hard battle in the beginning to to convince people that while they're entertainment, I do tackle quite strong themes mm. in the book, and I think that's given the longevity to just um, you know congratulate you and dismiss them as good chick flick stuff, chick lit stuff, and mm -hmm. you know it's all lovely. But it is so much more more than that. How frustrating was that lack of recognition earlier on? In the beginning, it was it was hard, but you have to kind of battle on and just mm. keep telling people that try the book because there is a lot more in it. And mm. I think if they were just light and fluffy, I doubt that I would be here 20 books on. Indeed. And, of course, we do go way back. You know, I think I first met you in 1981. Yes, yes. Wow, we worked together on Good Morning, Morning Australia. Australia. Mm -hmm. And so this is my second life. Yeah. What are you going to do when you <laughs> leave television? You've already written books. Yes, when I... <laughs> Play golf. Too, yeah, a lot of golf. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be a pro golf uh, uh, player either. Yeah. Um, you also more recently spent a month in Burma, and I know it's toward a news book, but also some of the, the personal issues that you have um, uh, taken a stand for, including, um, you know, a lot of female uh, international heroes who, mm. um, you know, go through pretty tough lives. Yes, it's... It, it's interesting, isn't it, that when it's women in power, mm. I mean, anyone in power, a position of power is always under threat, but when it's a woman that's in power, uh, I think the, the, they do tend to get more attention and more more flack in the case of someone like Aung San Suu Kyi, who I've been a big supporter of for, mm. for a number of years. So I think...